my presentation, as um, um, we noted, is on 1099 uh, workers' income recipients or in the independent contractors. And I am going to talk about the new requirement under New York law that expanded new hire reporting for independent contractors. So what I uh, will do is provide a, a high-level overview of the State Directory of New Hires, or the SDNH, uh, and then I'm going to speak about that new requirement to report independent contractors. And, and, and then I'll highlight some implementation, implementation considerations, and certainly Alice had some, um, some important thoughts about that, too. And um, I do want to mention, too, one thing that became very apparent do, during, um, you know, the, the core of the pandemic, when there was the expanded unemployment insurance benefit um, available to 1099 workers, we saw payments coming in that we either had not received payments for a long time from particular individuals, paying parents, or perhaps never received a payment. And with that expanded UIB, um, we saw that that incredible increase in those payments, and it really goes to show that this has been a harder um, population to be able to have a more streamlined uh, payment process, and so the need certainly is there, and um, and I think Alice highlighted the, the continued conversation that we'll need to have to see how we can make make it. Uh, easier for employers to be able to comply because it is it is different um, uh, than the employee regular payment. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So under federal law, all states must maintain a state directory of new hires, and all employers have certain mandatory reporting obligations. And why new hire reporting? Um, it helps to quickly locate uh, fathers for purposes of establishing paternity and non-custodial or paying parents to help establish uh, support orders um, to modify. And importantly, it is um, key to the income withholding process, allowing for streamlining of collection of support from parents who become employed or they be change jobs uh, or become re are, are rehired by an employer. And of course, new hire reporting helps children to receive vital support. So states must maintain a state directory of new hires, um, and that in New York, it's, uh, it's maintained through a collaboration between um, the state child support program and the state Department of Taxation and Finance. Um, employers must report their newly hired or rehired employees. And that reporting happens on a W-4, the W-4, or an equivalent form, and we'll talk a little bit more about the IT form in New York. And then the state, under federal law, state may prescribe a time, but not later than 20 days, or if reporting electronically or magnetically, two times a month. So employers who are required to report to the New York state, and in some situations, multi-state employers who designate New York as their reporting state should use one of the following methods to submit new hire information. You can submit online via the New York New Hire Online Reporting Center, and that is www.nynewhire.com. Submit a copy of the employer's form IT2104, the employee's withholding allowance certificate, in place of or in addition to that federal form W-4, which of course is the employee's withholding certificate. And yes, it can be faxed uh, to the number there, 518-320-1080, or it can be mailed to the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance at their new hire notification address. So after the employer files that new hire report, states must enter the information in that state directory within five business days and then transmit it to the national directory within three days from entry into the state directory of new hires. And the child support program uh, specifically must use that matched information for location um, and also to send wage withholding notices to employers within two days. And you can see that is a very, um, very tight time frame 
uh, and we hope as efficient as possible to get that issued. So the expanded new hire reporting for independent contractors, that January 1, um, 2022 was the go live date for that requirement. And on October 25th, 2021, Governor Hochul signed chapter law 504 of the laws of 2021, which expanded those reporting requirements to include certain independent contractors into that state directory of new hires. And the purpose was to aid in the administration of the child support program, collecting child support and streamlining the location of parents. The new law amends relevant provisions of the New York State tax law to require that employers report individuals under an independent contractor arrangement with contractors in excess of $2,500. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the effective date of that new law uh, was January 1st of 2022. Employers must report independent co contractors to the state, again, just summarizing um, in contracts, contracts greater than $2,500, that effective date. And again, you can find some information on the new, new York um, newhire.com uh, is where those submissions can be made. And also you will find some more information there. Um, and you'll also find information on our website, childsupport.ny.gov. And there is an employer section with a variety of uh, fact sheets and information summarize that employers must now, now report um, certain information to the state directory, and that's the independent contractor's name, the first, middle, initial, and last. The independent contractor's address, that street, city, state, zip code, um, the independent contractor's social security number, and the date of services first performed. Um, also, you'll include the employer name, the employer address, um, and also the employer identification number. So next I wanted to just highlight some implementation considerations and Alice did um, mention some of these when she was speaking. Um, first, uh, you will want to take a look at your onboarding procedures and reporting schedules to ensure that compliance with this additional reporting requirement, that's the reporting requirement of the um, 1099 workers, uh, independent contractors. And it will be really important that you're communicating and coordinating this new requirement between your accounts payable and your payroll staff or unit or between the different staff or divisions responsible for employee administration versus the independent contractor administration. Um, employers will receive the income withholding orders or wage garnishments for independent contractors. Um, as you can see, that those will be issued within two days of reporting and must comply um, as with employees. And again, I certainly do want to acknowledge um, uh, Alice talking about some of those challenges um, related to kind of uh, sometimes those payments aren't as regular uh, as you will find with, of course, the employee, traditional employee. Um, so there will need to be some coordination and effort um, in that regard in order to ensure compliance. Another thing, and I, um, in the sponsor's memo for the bill, um, well, let me just start by saying consider reporting all independent contractors. Um, the sponsor's memo for the bill specifically talked about businesses and, and said businesses, although not required, are encouraged to report all independent contractors regardless of the contract amount. So you may find for your purposes, uh, it is an ease of administration um, and there is no prohibition on reporting all 1099 workers. Um, also what um, I have included in um, the last slide are those resources. And again, I think even if you Google New York New Hire Online Reporting Center, that again is that www.nynewhire.com. There are also, you'll find some new hire frequently asked questions um, contained there. Uh, if you look, uh, it's w, w, we'll get that out, www.tax.ny.gov. Um, again, if you look on new hire in particular, you Google, you, you can find those frequently asked questions. And finally, as I mentioned, um, we have a number of fact sheets for employers and included is a new hire employer fact sheet and that's childsport.ny.gov. 
Um, and again, there are some other great uh, resources available uh, to you. And I just finally wanted to to also um, mention, like Alice did, that opportunity to go to Boston um, and attend the employer symposium. Um, we are really excited about that opportunity to continue the conversation in some of the areas that we're talking about today, the lump sum, independent contractors, et cetera. And, um, and again, um, we, I hope we'll be able to get that information out to you. So we'll try and get some of the specific information um, to register for that program. And that is, I believe, July 13th in the afternoon and July 14th. And that's it, thank you. Thanks so much, Eileen. Um, and I think we have one question that came in during your um, presentation, Eileen. The question is, employers must report new hires no matter the size of the company employee-wise. The amount for 1099 employees must be greater than $2,500? Question mark. Yes. Yeah, so first question, um, no matter, there is no threshold size for who must report. So um, all employers are subject to this reporting requirement for independent contractors. And the must report is for those uh, 1099 um, workers who have contractors excuse me, contracts that are in excess of $2,500. But again, there's no prohibition on um, reporting all independent contractors. And certainly the, the uh, sponsor of the bill um, was encouraging that. Yeah, I was just going to say we did get an e we get we did get two questions um, prior to the conference during the registration for this segment. So the first question is: Is there any way to send or receive child support information for 1099 contractors? I know we we spoke a little bit about it when Alice was giving her presentation. She talked about um, the importance of protection of data, and so um, and thus that uh, the importance of there is a mechanism for reporting, and that is, um, so um, you can receive the IWO, for example, through a, the electronic income withholding order process, and we will be talking about that a little bit later in the process, um, and submission also would be, uh, yeah, so so the information for through the income withholding order would be through the electronic income withholding. We don't fax or email because, again, of security considerations. Thank you, Eileen. The other question was, how do we how do we locate people who refuse to pay child support through independent contractors? Yes. Yeah, so um, so certainly um, this. The new hire reporting, um, again, the employer uh, obligation to report is a very significant advancement in being able to find um, the independent contractors and to ensure that we are starting to get payments and hopefully more regular payments in. Um, and otherwise, um, there are some locate. Uh, other location tools that are used by the program, but as I uh, mentioned, this can be a very difficult population. The employer itself does not have that obligation other than the new hire reporting. And of course, um, if you are making a, a remittance, a payment to the independent contractor, there should be following of the income withholding order. Uh, so you would withhold and then you would submit in accordance with the instructions on the withholding order. Another common question is, uh, do the uh, CCPA limitations apply, the Consumer Credit Protection Act? And again, if it is um, income for services, then the CPA, CCPA um, limitations would apply. Another question in the chat is, um, the same new hire requirement applies for W-2 employees? Question mark. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that, again, stems from federal law and state law that any new hire, uh, new employee or um, rehired employee must be reported uh, to, the, to the new hire program. And again, that same um, 
the same New Hire Online Reporting Center uh, is where you can get information about that obligation and also submit um, uh, there. And as I mentioned, there are other ways of submission through fax um, and there was one other. Um, but yes, very important that the your um, new hires are reported to the new hire program, uh, known as the State Directory of New Hires. Uh, the next question is, is it different for staffing firms or still need to do New York new hire reporting? Yeah, I, I'll start with this one. And um, if somebody else wants to jump in, and certainly if I um, mince things here, but uh, if the staffing firm, it, it, and this is a, actually an area I'm, maybe I shouldn't speak to. So I think it depends on who the employer is. Uh, for the employee, if, if it's the staffing firm or otherwise, if if that um, if the staffing firm has these individuals are either independent contractors or employees, then it would be the staffing firm that would have the obligation to submit um, the information to the state directory of new hires. Um, again, um, uh, that is an area that you may want to reach out to your your counsel on, um, uh, particularly if it if there is some um, complexity in how they are are deemed uh, for purposes of you know regular W four W two reporting things like that. Thank you for that presentation. That was great. 